Hi, everybody. My name is Diana Costa. I'm your Embedded Ethics Fellow for CS221. Welcome to our first mini video lecture. Uh, during this term, we're going to be pairing short video lectures to the assignments that contain ethics questions that you can use as reference for these uh, assignments and in the future. Right now, we're going to be talking about algorithms and distribution. When you consider decision making from an algorithmic point of view, different algorithms may lead to different distributions of benefits and burdens in a population. What we're hoping that you ask yourself with this assignment question is how to evaluate these distributions from an ethical perspective. And for that, you need to appeal to a field of moral and political philosophy that is known as distributive justice. The principles of Distributive justice are those that provide moral guidance for the processes and structures that affect the distribution of benefits and burdens in societies or among populations. This is taken from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Principles of distributive justice are applicable to all kinds of decisions that generate distributions of burdens and benefits, which may be algorithmic or otherwise. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a list of principles of distributive justice that you can use to evaluate different courses of action. Please keep in mind that these are simplified and highly intuitive versions of principles. Uh, this is also a not exhaustive list of principles of distributive justice. There are much, uh, many more principles that you can appeal to when considering how to distribute burdens and benefits. If you're interested in finding more information, you can look at the footnotes uh, on your assignment, which link to various resources where you can find a lot more in-depth information about distributive justice. Now, before jumping in, um, it's important to think about the definition of what a principle is. So think of a moral principle as a kind of norm that dictates a policy or a course of action in a given situation. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce three principles of distributive justice by explaining how they support different courses of action in a particular decision scenario. That decision scenario is going to be the distribution of vaccines. That is going to be our toy example in this mini lecture. So having a limited number of vaccines and having a large population how do you allocate them? How do you allocate those vaccines among the people that um, you need to serve? Now, in reality, one would need to consider the question at a certain level, at either a global or national or local level. Uh, because we will not look at the details of how this happened in the real world or in any specific settings, uh, we're rather going to ask ourselves the question in the abstract form. Um, but thinking about the local level. So one potential policy would be to distribute vaccines in a way that ensures that as many people as possible get vaccinated, regardless who they are. Uh, this policy uh, would ensure that the highest quantity of people were vaccinated at the lowest cost and in the shortest time frame. You could achieve this by, say, um, setting vaccination centers in densely populated areas of the city so that you get as many people as possible. That policy would be supported by a moral principle that focused on maximizing well-being, that is, on securing the greatest net benefit. This principle is framed by a philosophical framework known as utilitarianism, which is a kind of consequentialism according to which the right action to perform in any given circumstance is that which maximizes utility. That is, the action that in the aggregate causes the highest net benefit or brings about the highest net benefit. A second course of action would be to ensure that the most vulnerable populations have access to vaccines before anybody else. You can determine this on the basis of age, of race, or class, or comorbidities. This course of action would be supported by a principle that focused on prioritizing those who are worst off. That is, choosing distributions that ensure 
that those who are the worst off are served first. There are different versions of this principle that fit under different philosophical frameworks, such as prioritarianism, which mandates that we give priority to the well-being of individuals who are worse off, or Rawls's different principle, according to which any inequality in the distribution of social goods should be such that it benefits those who are worst off. The third policy that we're going to consider uh, is one that dictates that you vaccinate the members of historically marginalized group first by, for instance, uh, setting vaccination sites in minority neighborhoods. Why would you do this? Think about it this way. By delaying vaccination to populations that have been historically marginalized, you are placing an additional burden on the members of these groups by, say, inhibiting their ability to return to work and secure income for themselves and their family. And this compounds the effects of historical discrimination. This policy would be supported by a principle that focused on avoiding a course of action that disproportionately burdens members of marginalized communities. Some have called this the anti-compounding injustice principle, and it is driven by the idea that algorithmic decision systems should be deliberately focusing on avoiding contributing to historical injustice and discrimination. Now to summarize, I have presented you with three principles of distributive justice, as I said, intuitive versions of these principles, one that focuses on maximizing well-being, one that focuses on prioritizing those who are worse off, and one that focuses on avoiding compounding historical injustice. Please remember, again, this is an intuitive and not an exhaustive list of distributive justice principles. But what matters here is that these principles are applicable to distributions of benefits and burdens through algorithmic decision making.